What's going on, Silverbacks? Today we got a video of uh, me and Phil, me doing a bunch of squats, and Phil doing some squats and deadlifts. Yeah, and we'll go through a couple tips uh, for squats, and uh, hopefully you guys learn something. So here I'm doing some squat warm-ups. Um, I recently changed a little bit of my uh, squat form, actually. I was going to the physio, and we talked about how I could open up my hips and uh, use my glutes a little bit more. So that's something I've been trying, and... Uh, screwing my feet into the ground and trying to spread the floor. And then for me today, I just squatted pretty much for a solid hour. Uh, I started off with a 4x5 at 390 as Phil mentioned. Um, I found this volume to be really helpful. I'm working on the Silverback program right now, which I will be out eventually uh, once I work through it and kind of work out some of the kinks and make sure it's just overall just solid program. And in terms of squat form, I've been really focusing on dropping into the hole a little bit faster. I found as the weights got heavier, I would sort of kind of baby my, baby my way down into the hole. So now I try and maintain the same speed, whether it's 315 or mid 400s, which is a little heavier for me. Um, and I found that's allowed me to get a good rebound out of the bottom and uh, continue my explosiveness. So as you can see through my final set here, my knees aren't caving in a lot, but when I started using uh, a lot more glute activation, I found that my knees did have that tendency. So that's something you might notice when you start spreading the floor, uh, activating your glutes at the top. Your knees might need a little more focus as to uh, push them out and really focus on uh, making sure these aren't giving in. And something I need to start working on more is tucking my uh, elbows underneath the bar and really squeezing the bar into my back. I found uh, moving my hands in, although it's tough on my shoulder mobility, which I need to work on, um, but bringing my hands in really forces my back to tighten up all the muscles. And that just allows me to be more stable um, when I'm in the squat. This is my last working set here with 480 pounds. Uh, one thing I want to point out is this big breath that I take right at the beginning. So I really like uh, pretending that I'm trying to breathe in the whole room when I start bracing. And that really focuses on uh, bringing in all of the air I can into my abdomen and keeping a really stable core. Again, when it comes to using your glutes more, pretend your feet are trying to spread the floor apart. And as you're doing that, driving through your heels all through the motion. And you might want to focus on pushing your knees out a little bit more as well. All right, and this is where uh, you really build some character. Um, I programmed in a final set of 3 by 12 I did 315 pounds. Uh, I took the belt off, and uh, this is definitely cardio. Uh, it's a lot of work, but uh, it really helps ingrain that movement pattern, um, and it really allows me to work on my work capacity. And we got Phil here doing a really great angle, the crotch shot, um, up and close and personal. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to get a kind of uh, bird's eye, maybe not a bird's eye view, like a worm's eye view yeah. of what it looks like to see Adam <laughs> squatting. And uh, when it comes to depth, you can be sure that Adam's basically always hitting depth. I've usually been the one with troubles, but uh, glute activation has really helped me in that department for sure. And yeah, I really try to embrace the Astrograss model and don't want to limit myself too much and always work on my mobility to make sure I can uh, maintain that depth. And here's a video of me being Phil's personal deadlift jack, showing him how effortless it is to throw on 45s. When you're getting to the uh, end of the workout, it can be uh, a little fatiguing to put those plates on. <laughs> so having a training partner definitely helps uh, with that because, you know, sometimes stripping and putting on your own plates and messing around with the bar, trying to get it straight on a platform that's just totally uh, dug out, you know, can definitely be a struggle. So that's why it's helpful to have Adam around. One tip for the deadlift I've been talking to Phil about, been working with myself personally on and even mentioned to friends is once the bar gets to about knee level or just above, is really focusing on sliding your hips through and pushing them or squeezing them towards the bar and using your glutes rather than like hitching with your back. I find it's much easier just to slide your hips through into the bar uh, and you can do that by just squeezing your glutes. Yeah, another big thing that's going to help you in your deadlift lockout is actually flexing your quads as soon as the bar passes your kneecap. So that's going to be a big movement or a big muscle rather that's going to help your legs complete that lockout, get those hard knees so you won't be called for it uh, in competition for a soft lockout. Yeah, it's good to have these small mental cues to think about when you're getting near the end, especially the lockout's always a difficult uh, time. So having those cues in the back of your mind when you're lifting can definitely help you get that lockout and uh, get those three white lights.
We hope these tips are helpful. These are just some of the things that cues that we've learned over the last couple of years from powerlifting. Hope they were helpful. Uh, comment below if you have any mental cues that you find useful. And stay tuned, Silverbacks, for more content. We'll be up on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Periscope, Snapchat, and we'll definitely be putting out more videos for you guys. So if you like what you see, comment below. Uh, if there's any topics you want us to cover, we'll be more than happy to look at those things and see what we can do for you guys.